All right, welcome back everyone to DETV's Good Morning Wilmington. First up on the plaza today is Kendall Massad. She's the executive director for Delaware Charter Schools Network. Welcome to the Welcome. plaza, Kendall. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yes, it. Of course. I love the red. She's popping. She's popping. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not yes. fashion going on in the oh, day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, you know. <laughs> Try to look good when I can. Well, you do. You look lovely. So, okay. Kendall, let's get right into it. What is the Delaware Charter Schools Network? Yes. First off, I want to thank you for adding the S in. So many people forget that. Mm -hmm. so, right. Because we are the. We are the um, the advocate and support organization for all of the charter schools mm -hmm. wow. in all our state. Schools. And we have mm -hmm. 23 in operation right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a 24th that opens next year. Wow. Why is that? Why is an advocate for charter schools important? Mm. Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, yeah because I, it's, a lot of people haven't heard of it, which mm -hmm. you do. Right. So, first off, charter schools are public schools. Right. I want to okay. make sure that okay. you understand that. Not everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And we're different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when things are different, <clears throat> they're not always appreciated. Right. And so our schools in 2001 decided that they needed an outside organization to help them have their voice heard. You were mm -hmm. talking about earlier the Wilmington fines and leases and making sure people showed up. Mm -hmm. That's what we help our schools do and we okay. help our parents okay. and our teachers and our leaders show up okay. and have their voice heard. How long have you been in this position? Since 2012. Okay, okay. So you've, uh, you've been through uh, many years of also the pandemic. So I'm sure there was a lots of uh, changing and adapting through that. It was. And uh, now where are we at right now, present day? Do we feel like we are in a better place? Uh, absolutely. Actually, so charter schools, the, the beauty of charter schools is that we're small and so we're nimble and we're able to pivot quickly mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. things change. Right. Pandemic. Right. Yes. Big things there. Yeah. Right. We had some of our schools that were working with their students the very next week. At, so March 13th, 2020, it was when this, the governor said, we've got to stop schools. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> within the next week, some of our schools were already working with their kids right away right. Right. and making sure that they had all of the tools that they needed, all of the work that they needed. It doesn't mean that the district schools weren't working on those things, mm -hmm. but in the district, it's a much bigger bureaucratic yeah. mm -hmm. organization. Okay. Yeah. In a charter school, it's one school, mm -hmm. and they're able to very quickly determine what their children need what their teachers need, what their families need, and make that happen. And right. so I like to think of the pandemic mm -hmm. as um, all the, for all the silver linings that mm -hmm. we found. And some of the things that we did find were the ability to do different things. Right, for right, because it's more of an intimate yeah. uh, school, more of a smaller school. You're able to make those changes and make those changes quickly. So yes. the pandemic, you didn't you saw it yes it was a, a hurdle but you were able to attack this ox obstacle and continue to move forward and continue to teach and still have the the students learn and the teachers you know continue to work where some schools were having a hard time adapting mm -hmm. so that's an interesting uh, point because I, I didn't even think of that yeah. but that you made a good point with that and you know one thing that I want to I want to touch on with mm -hmm. that is like the misconceptions of charter schools versus mm -hmm. um, regular uh, traditional yeah. um, yes. um, um, public schools. What are the benefits of a charter school versus a public school? I know one is smaller. Mm -hmm. um, what other benefits are there? So the difference between a charter school and a district school yeah. is that district schools are um, connected to a larger organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, a charter school is smaller. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were talking about the way we make decisions mm -hmm. is almost overnight. Mm. Quickly. So in a charter school, you have a governing board. Right, so right. you have to, go, right. You have to yeah. vote. Yeah, yeah. But, our, right. but our governing boards are mm -hmm. not, so we, we're all nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So they're like a, governing, a board of a nonprofit as well as the board of a public school. So right. they are fiscally responsible. They're all transparent. All of the mm -hmm. things that they have to do are the same as a public body. Mm -hmm. um, but, so, very good example. 
in a charter school. We had uh, teachers at mm -hmm. one charter school. There was a third and a fourth grade teacher, or two third grade teachers. And one was really good at English and social studies. The other was really good at math and science. Okay. But in third grade, <laughs> normally one teacher takes all the kids for all the subjects. Right. But these two third grade teachers said, um, what if we could do it differently? Mm. So they went directly to the school leader and said, look, I'm really good at English and social studies. I'm really good at math and science. Can we split our classes? So start the kids moving between two different teachers early mm -hmm. so yes. that they could focus on what they're really good at, okay. which made it an even better experience right. for the children. In a district, you have a lot more people that you have to ask mm. to do those things. Mm. Yeah. And it takes months to Politics, do hmm. if you will. A little bit. Right. <laughs> Just politics. So if you were to put, I guess, simplified even more, mm -hmm. what would be the benefits of attending a charter school other than the decision making happens quickly? Sure. You talking about for the students? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most or important. Maybe, oh yes, for the students, but also maybe if there are parents listening that want to maybe put their children into a charter school or enroll in a charter, charter school, what would be the benefits? So, every child learns differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. every, every adult, we know that, we, mm -hmm. right? We have different interests. Children have different interests, yes. different ways that they learn. So, mm -hmm. a Monte, uh, Montessori school? Yes. Mm -hmm is a great option, mm -hmm. but it may not be mm -hmm. the right option for every family or child, right. right? So in a Montessori school, they don't have desks. We've had parents come in and go, whoa, where are all the desks? There's a teacher supposed to be at the front of the classroom. That's not how that works. Right. Um, we have schools that are dual language schools. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to mm -hmm. learn Greek. We have a Greek English immersion school. Not everybody wants to learn Spanish. Spanish, right? So we have different types of schools for different needs of children. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit. In a traditional district school, you have, you have a large number of children and you have to do what's right for all kids. It doesn't mean that we don't. It doesn't mean that they don't also offer options. But in a charter school, it's a smaller school. It's a smaller school setting, mm -hmm. and it's very focused. Mm -hmm. We have a mission that we have to meet. And I like that you mentioned the, the, the differences. I mean, every, every student learns differently. Very, very true. I, I mean, every child learns differently. And the fact that every school is set up differently, it's almost like it's customized for that individual. Yes. How many schools are, how many charter schools are in Delaware again? Have so we have 23 in existence, so in operation today, okay. with 18,222 children. Wow. Two of which are my own. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to put that out so there. So <laughs> I'm not just, I'm not just a charter advocate, I'm a charter parent too. Okay. Uh, and then next year, the Brian Allen Stevenson School of Excellence. Do you know Brian Stevenson? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that Brian Stevenson. Wow. His, uh, this is a school that's based on his beliefs, of proximity and, and giving back to the community. Uh -huh. And that will open in the mm -hmm. fall with the sixth and seventh grade. It will eventually okay. be through high school. Where is that located? That'll be in Sussex County. In Sussex County. How many charter schools are in Newcastle County? 16, 15, okay. 15. So majority are yeah. in Newcastle County? Yes. Is that, okay. Because that's where we started. Okay. What do you want people to know about charter, the, the Delaware Charter School Network that they don't know? Mm. That they don't know. Um, Misconceptions, anything. What do you uh, want well, to know? so it's so we don't steal children. <laughs> you must have heard that somewhere. <laughs> we don't. Our schools don't kick children out. Oh wow. We cannot pick and choose. There is a lottery for every charter school that has okay. more applicants than spots mm -hmm. they have to by law do a lottery and mm -hmm. that's done through um algorithms and computers we used to do the bingo ball okay. baskets and okay. we don't do that anymore okay. because you know you grow with the time yeah yeah that was so 80s um, yeah. so <laughs> and so or 90s because right. we started in 1990 <laughs> in 1995 here with charter schools in 1992 right. in the country but 
that is one of the biggest misconceptions is that we can pick and choose who we want mm -hmm. to right. come to our schools. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. So okay. if a parent has a desire for their child to go to a certain charter school, mm -hmm. they can do the application process. There is a time limit for that. Mm -hmm. And then they go through the lottery if there, okay. again, is there are more uh, applications and spots available. Nice. So, Kendall, could you share with us briefly before, because I know we're, we're getting to the end of the, the interview, and I want to mention about the Longwood grant, but before we talk about that, mm -hmm. there was something, before we were, yeah. you know, started the show, I always like to talk to our guests, and um, tell us a success story. There has to be a success story that, you know, out there that shows the, the impact charter schools have for students in Delaware. Oh my goodness, there's so many. I'm, I'm gonna give you a little tiny one, because okay. it's based on what, and then I'm gonna give you a larger one, but the little tiny one is you were talking about your, uh, the pageants. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline Means mm. yes. went to Delaware Military That's Academy, uh, and her brother, Johnny, also went to DMA. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that that, and then being part of that community yes. gave her the confidence to go through and do what she did. Of course, her mom is a, is a fierce woman, so yes. so yes. working, so <laughs> she's one of them. Mm -hmm. But, so Odyssey Charter School. Yes. Um, Melissa Tracy is a teacher there. Mm -hmm. She started with an idea. She was a social studies teacher, but she wanted to show how um, food insecurities, how we could work in, with our families and our children and to help them learn how to grow food in a small area. Mm. She started with eight garden beds that she raised money on her own to do. Now they have over 23 chart, um, garden beds. Uh, they have a vertical garden. Okay. They have hydroponics in their classrooms. Okay. Mm. And, they, and she's teaching children how to do urban gardening, but also how their food affects social justice. And mm -hmm. then through the pandemic, okay. she and another teacher who was at a district school started talking about the work that she's doing at Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And this district teacher mm -hmm. is replicating the hydroponic gardening in her school in the city of Wilmington, the students at Odyssey are mentoring the fourth grade. So the 10th grade students are mentoring the fourth grade students. Nice. And they are helping spread that message of how you can take care of you, mm -hmm. how you can eat healthy and live in the city that may be a food desert. Mm -hmm. That is a huge success story in my yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right, Melissa right. Tracy, the teacher, is actually last year was um, made a national, was given the National Change Maker Award from wow, the National Alliance for Public awesome. Charter Schools. And congratulations so, to so her. So for more information, where can people go to, to learn more about? DECharterNetwork.org okay. is our website, but they can follow me on Instagram, The Village at DCSN, or Facebook, right. which is DE Charters. Um, we try to be as out there as we possibly right, right. can. Awesome. And awesome. as I mentioned earlier, again, you're a recipient of the Longwood grant, so I'm sure that you're very grateful for that opportunity. I'm absolutely right, grateful right. to Longwood for Excellent. all of the, uh, the not only the help that, and support that they give to the network, but right. to all of our charter schools there. One of, they and Welfare are the two top uh, philanthropic foundations Excellent. that support our schools. Thank awesome. you, Kendall. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you wish for you having so me. much luck thank you. Um, as you continue to advocate for the charter schools in Delaware. Thank you. Thanks, yes. Kendall.